Welcome to Pool School. Today we're going to be talking about what you need to do to make sure that your pool always looks good and make sure that you keep this equipment running for a long time. Okay? I'm going to try to break it down as easy as I can for you. Um, try to answer most questions that you would have if you were standing here at Pool School. So if you watch this entire thing, you should be able to keep your pool looking nice, bright, clean, and your equipment running for a long time. So first things first is talking about the water level in the pool. If the water level in the pool is not right, um, your system's gonna get air. Your skimmers are gonna start sucking air. That's the first thing you're probably gonna notice is your skimmers start to suck air, especially when the filter pump is running at high speed if you do have a variable speed pump. So variable speed pump is running in high or even if it's a single speed pump, whenever that pump comes on and it's running at high, pulls low with, with, with water, your skimmers will start to suck in air, they'll start to gurgle, they'll start to get loud. The air will come in through the system, which is not good, and it'll exit back out through all the returns in the pool, making a bunch of bubbles. It might drive you crazy. So if that's happening, you might wanna add water to your pool. If you wanna keep that from happening, just make sure that you look at your window every once in a while, if you're not using the pool, and make sure that you don't have a low water level. Make sure that that water level is Typically, the ideal water level is gonna be halfway up your water line tile, right below your overflow if you have one in your pool. If it's an Omega pool, it has it. But if you're watching this video and I haven't built your pool, you're looking for that little guy, it might not be there. Some people don't install them. But long story short, you want your water level center of the tile. If you do that, um, you should have a lot less issues. Um, that's gonna bring me to my next thing is evaporation. Um, in a normal summer, it is gonna be, on average, you'll lose an inch and a half to three inches of water, okay? That's in a summer. Um, a lot of people get shocked when I tell them that in the winter, they can lose double that. They can lose up to six inches of water. And that's because of the drier air, especially here in Houston, Texas. Uh, here in Houston, we have humid air most of the year, but then we start getting those cold um, northerns come through here with dry air and it, evaporates water like crazy even though you're not using the pool it's just from that air especially if you live in an area where you have constant uh, air wind going through there if you're in a good breezeway so again uh, uh, keep that in mind evaporation that's a your main reason you're gonna lose water in the pool unless you have a leak um, but you will lose up to six inches of water in the winter up to three inches in the summer so again um, make sure the pool's always at the right level. That's number one on our list. So one is making sure that the pool's at the right level. Number two on our list is we're gonna talk about the filter pump. So the filter pump is basically the heart of the main operation of this pool. So we have, for the filter pump to run as it should, you need to make sure that you have the right water level in the pool. We've discussed that already. So now, after discussing that water level, we're gonna talk about the filter pump. This is your filter pump right here. It's labeled filter pump, okay? And again, this is what does most of the operating in this pool, especially when it comes to the filtration system, the chlorinating, and so forth, okay? So we're gonna talk about the filter pump. Uh, that's gonna be number two on our list. We're gonna come over here once a week and we're gonna make sure that it is running clean, okay? So when you go to service this pump, you wanna make sure that you turn it off, okay? You don't wanna go in and open that pump while it's running, it's not gonna be good news. So, come to your, come over to your system. Most of you, most of my clients have the Hayward Omni Logic. Uh, you can do this on your phone, you can do this on the screen. When I'm out here servicing my equipment, I'd rather just do everything here at the screen. Um, I'll tap the screen to refresh it. I refreshed it and it was in spa when I did it. There's these little triangles, these arrows at the bottom of the screen that will scroll back and forth between pool and spa. Anytime I'm servicing my equipment, I'm always, always gonna be um, in the pool screen over here. So anytime you come, you're gonna come over here and do anything back here, uh, starting with turning on, the, turning on or off the filter pump, uh, you wanna do it in pool, under the pool screen. So you'll tap that screen right there and if the pump were to be running, you would turn it off right at the filter pump icon. Right now the pump is off, so that icon is not lit up, okay? If, if something is running, that icon will be lit up, like the cleaner right there. It shows that it's on. 
we turn it off it's off so right now everything on our pull screen is off including our filter pump so now knowing that our filter pump is turned off we're going to go ahead and proceed to opening up the filter pump by removing the filter pump lid um we're just going to give it a few taps just like that lid comes open now once we open that lid a couple things to keep in consideration is that there is an o-ring that is located right in here make sure that you don't lose that typically they stay in there they don't come out you also want to make sure the most importantly that it stays clean if there's any kind of debris if there's a dead blade of grass in there if there's a piece of a sticker in there whatever it is it's going to cause all kinds of issues so anytime that you're servicing this pump one thing that is very 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 important is that you maintain that o-ring in there clean now that o-ring sits on this part of the pump right here on the on that rim make sure that that's perfectly clean when you're done servicing your pump okay if you ensure that that's clean and that your o-ring's clean you shouldn't have a bunch of major little issues because it will cause a bunch of issues um next thing we're going to do is pull out the strainer basket we're going to clean out the filter pump so uh be careful with the way you clean these guys i'm going to give this little tap over here well let's do it somewhere over here in the grass so we don't... i'm giving it a tap it's a brand new basket i know i can get away with doing that but as time goes on as the uv rays hit it the chemicals it will make these baskets brittle so maybe using a hose to rinse these out thoroughly would be better than slapping it on the ground like i just did if you ever do have a filter pump basket that breaks automatically go get yourself a new one um because what's going to happen is it's going to it's going to let all this bigger debris into your filter it's going to make your filter pressure go off a lot quicker and it's going to make the uh lifespan of your filters your cartridges in there a lot shorter so again um every week clean this at least every week if you live in a place that has big trees dropping leaves in the pool all the time then uh you might want to uh clean it a little bit more often maybe every other day so when we go when we go to put this basket back you want to make sure that you uh, have this hole lined up with um the front of the pump right here where it says pump suction okay if you do that that strainer basket will fall all the way down it'll seat the way it should and you'll be able to get the lid back on if you don't do that it won't seat all the way and god bless your heart if you get that lid on there i've seen a few people do it and it's it's a nightmare getting the lid back off but again you line up that hole with the front of the back of the uh, pump right here was this pump suction it drops all the way and this kind of stuff is what you want to make sure you don't have on your o-ring or on your rim right here because it will cause all kinds of issues so again it's clean there it's clean there now when we go to put the lid back on it is clearly stamped front so when you go to put it back on you want to leave that on the front side of this pump you want to leave the handles just like that okay you can also do it the reverse way which i see a lot of people do all the time but it's not the right way to do it it will work it'll just make it a lot harder for you to get this uh lid off come a week from now after it's been running under suction pressure so i see this all the time people put it on backwards it will work but i mean come on you have another pump or two right next to it as an example i mean and it is stamped front so don't do this and again coming back here to get this lid off in a week from now and you try to get your finger in here you're probably going to cut it you're going to bust your knuckles in there so that's not the proper way clean clean front up and just like that okay now we're going to go back to our omni logic and we're going to turn the filter pump back on when we turn the filter pump back on we're going to turn it on under high speed to get that prime through the system a lot quicker so we're going to tap that screen i actually happen to land it on pool we're going to tap it again under the pool screen we're going to look for our filter pump icon and we're going to turn it on on high speed so as we wait for that pump to prime up as 
we wait for this pump to prime up, the next thing we're gonna pay attention to is gonna be our third item on our list. Number three is our filter, okay? It has a pressure gauge here, and there's three arrows in this gauge. There's your actual true pressure gauge, which is your black one, which will start coming up slowly as the pump primes up. And then you have two reminder arrows here, a green and a red arrow. To, sh to show you where your clean pressure is at, which would be the green arrow. And the red arrow is to show you where you shouldn't be at. If your pressure arrow right here is close to that red one, you haven't cleaned your filter right. You better just stop what you're doing and clean the filter down right away before you start doing internal damage to this filter. Um, it's recommended that you break these filters down minimum three times a year. I like to recommend that you break them down once every quarter, so that's four times a year. Um, I don't wait for the pressure to get up high. I just routinely clean my filters out four times a year, once a quarter. So we're still waiting for this uh, pump to get to full prime. And when it does, we're gonna align our green arrow here. So the green and the red arrow move together, okay? They move with this little knob right here. There's a 10 pound offset between the, the green and the red, okay? And they, they are there just as reminders. So theoretically speaking, let's say that we just turned the system on. Filter's running perfectly clean and we know this. When we know that, we're gonna go set our clean point. Green means clean. So then we just lined up the green with our clean running pressure. And you should not let that black running pressure gauge get close to the red arrow. If you've done that, again, turn the filter pump off and get the servicing in your filter. And uh, we're gonna explain that in a different segment. Um, so that's number three on our list. So number three on the list is really just a visual thing. When you come around that corner, when you come back here once a week and you're gonna service your pump basket, um, it's just really looking at this guy and making sure your pressure is not running high for whatever reason, okay? So, number three on the list is just making sure that you're running at good pressure, okay? Um, number four on the list is gonna be the chlorinator. No, I'm sorry, let's back up. Number four on the list is gonna be the ozonator. The ozonator um, is installed on some of my pools, not all of them, um, but if you do have an ozonator, the ozonator is just a visual thing for the most part as well every week. It's just coming over here and making sure that it's regulated good. On this particular model, you have two lines here on this dial. From here to here, here's the lines that is stamped normal operating range, okay? There's a red marble in here, if you can see that. And as I move this knob here, it moves that marble in there. It basically controls how much ozone we're putting back into the pool. Now you don't want to get that marble high up above the normal operating range because you'll have a lot of air bubbles in the pool and having too much ozone in the pool is not a good thing. So I typically on most of my, my pools, I like to keep it regulated on the lower side. Right there floating at the, on the lower end. And as long as your filter's running clean, that guy really shouldn't ever need to be readjusted. If you're having to adjust this, it's because chances are your filter's running dirty. So break it down, clean it, and that should set everything straight on your ozonator. So number four on this list was the ozonator. And again, it's really just the visual. When you're over here servicing your filter pump and you get everything back up and running, you're waiting for that prime. Wait for it to pick up its full prime like we're running right now. And at full prime, make sure that that little red marble is in there floating in the normal operating range. And again, that is with the filter pump running in high uh, running mode, okay? So anytime you do any adjustments to your ozonator, anytime you do any adjustments or you reference your, your gauge on your filter, you have to make sure that your filter pump is in high speed, okay? Um, when your filter pump drops into medium speed or low speed, your pressure will change here and your setting will also change on your ozonator, that is normal. Don't go trying to change it under any other running speed other than high speed. Um, so again, 
recapping on what I've said so far, number one is gonna be making sure your pool's full of water. Number two is gonna be make sure that your filter pump has a clean uh, strainer basket in it. Number three is gonna be make sure your, your filter is running clean. Again, mostly a visual. Number four is gonna be your ozonator, okay? Again, that's mainly a visual. You're making sure that it's, it's running. So again, another thing you need to know about the ozonator, there's really two things about the ozonator. That this light right here has to be on when the filter pump is on. If that light right there is not on when the filter pump is on, there's something wrong with the unit. So that's really just the two things to know about it. The light and how to regulate it, okay? And where that little ball needs to be floating. So those are the two things to the ozonator. That anytime that your filter pump, and I mean anytime, anytime your filter pump is running, that blue light has to be on. And that little marble has to be floating down there towards the bottom with the filter pump in high speed, okay? So that was number four. Number five is gonna be your chlorinator, okay? So the chlorinator is not that important in dead winter, okay, dead middle of the winter. But here in Houston, Texas, the chlorinator is really important for most of the year. So this guy, it's imperative that you keep him full to the top every week. You come over here and there's two ways to do it. You can either turn your filter pump off before you take this cap off, or you can do the way I like to do it. I keep the filter pump running and I control the flow in here with the knob. So being that I know I'm gonna take this cap off, I don't wanna get showered with water, so I'm gonna turn it off. There's a dial here that's labeled from off to maximum output of five. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna turn it to off, okay? That should have stopped all the flow in that in that chlorinator, at least slowed it down to the point where I can manage it and I can, I can put chlorine tablets in it. Now, before I open this chlorinator, keep in mind that there's gonna be a lot of chlorine sweat at the bottom of that, uh, of that cap. That's, if you get that on you, you're gonna put holes in your clothes, you're gonna put white spots on your, on your clothes. Uh, another thing, as soon as you take this off, it likes to squirt out that chlorinated uh, sweat. So, like, it's full of pressure, so be careful, don't get that on your clothes. So I like to stand back a little bit. Oh, and another thing too, if you're uh, sensitive with your sinuses and stuff like that, be careful with the smell of this chlorine. It can sometimes, depending on how that wind's blowing and how much chlorine is in there, it can almost clear your sinuses. So again, we're gonna open it up. There it goes. We're gonna take this cap off. And this is the stuff that you can get on your clothes. Okay, so make sure you don't get that stuff on your clothes. Set the cap aside. Now, if you look in here, there's still some chlorine tablets stuck at the bottom. We're almost empty there, okay? We're, can you see the chlorine tablets in there? Perfect. So th this is going to have to be refilled with tablets. I don't have the tablets to do it right now, but I'm going to basically uh, demonstrate how you would do it if I, if I did have them. So y'all saw where that water level was at right now. Um, y'all saw where that water level was at. That water level was down here. So if I go to drop a tablet in there right now, I'm going to have water splash back at me. I'm going to have bleach water all over my clothes. So this is why I like to keep the pump running. I like to come over here and open this dial up enough to bring this water level up to flush with the rim of this chlorinator. So as I'm putting my tablets in there, I have the water splashing down this way instead of splashing back at me. Okay, so I'm gonna open up this dial. This is what happens when I open up the dial. Okay, so I start getting water that comes up. I bring the water level up. Then I close it right about there. Maybe give it a little bit more. Now I close it. So now I've stopped the water from filling that chlorinator. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna step back as far as I can and I'm gonna start dropping tablets into this guy. Okay, and when I, the tablets, they're three inch hucky pucks as we refer to them in the industry. They're all gonna be different thicknesses depending on what brand tablet uh, that you're using. Um, I'll stack as many as nine in there of the thin stuff and about as little as seven of the thicker tablets, but they're all three inch tablets, okay? And you're gonna put them in here, and as you put them in, I'll have to kind of stand back and drop them in. And as you see, just from doing that, pretending I was dropping a tablet in there, I got splashed to come all the way back over here. 
which means that if I was standing right here, I would have got it all over my clothes. So again, keep that in consideration when you're refilling the coronator. Try to stand back as far away from it and drop those tablets in one by one. Once you get the tablets about to this level, you can go ahead and put the cap back on. This cap also has an O-ring on there. Make sure that O-ring is on there. There's no reason to over tie it for the reason that you, there's an O-ring on here. So we're gonna put the O-ring back on, make sure the O-ring's on, put the lid back on. That's about as tight as it needs to be. Now we can come back over here and set our chlorine adjustment to wherever we need it, depending on the time of the year. I typically like to keep my full output for the most part, and I like to regulate my chlorine output with the speed of the pump. Okay, so if I'm gonna throttle down my chlorine, I don't throttle it down here. I'm throttling it down with the speed of the pump. That is, for the most part, the main things on the list um, when it comes to back here, okay? There's other little things. There's, uh, so that was five items. One, making sure the pool's full of water at the right level. Number two is making sure your filter pump is running clean. Number three is making sure your, your filter's running clean. With number four, doing a visual look over and making sure your light is on on your ozonator and your marble's floating in the right place while the pump is in high speed. And then number five, making sure your chlorinator's full of chlorine and at the adjustment set properly. Those are the main basic things uh, back at the equipment. There's other things we're still gonna need to do at the pool when it comes to uh, chemistry. But another thing that you need to be doing routinely, and it should be more than once a week, is checking your skimmer baskets. So let's go look at your skimmer baskets. So anytime that you come in the backyard, you're on a phone call, you're out having a cup of tea, whatever, think about checking your skimmer baskets. Again, depending on where you live, you could get these things as full of June bugs or leaves overnight. So, or you could be saving lives because this is where mice wind up. This is where snakes wind up, frogs. So if you're checking it once a day, you're probably saving some lives. You're not drowning all those little guys in there. Okay. All right. So again, uh, this is, this shouldn't really even be on that same list. This should be on a totally different list. This is something that you're doing every other day if not every day but the other stuff that we just talked about around the corner at the equipment that's the list of five things that you need to be doing every week in the summer in the fall and the spring you can maybe cut back to once every two weeks but here in houston texas it's basically every week all year long um there, that is it on what you need to do when it comes to your list. There's other things here that I want to introduce you to uh, that I have not talked about. Uh, for example, your spa air blower. Anytime you're going to go get in your spa, you can do this from your phone. I'm going to do, in this particular case, I'm going to do it from the computer, but you can do this from your phone. Um, you're going to come over here, you're going to tap that screen. And again, we're talking about spa mode we want to get in the spa okay again you can do this from your phone but i'm gonna do it from here um so we want to get in the spa we come over here look for the spa window or spa screen tap it then we're going to look for filter pump we're going to touch filter pump right there and then we're going to turn it on on high speed as we've done that you have now two actuated valves moving right here this valve right here and this valve right here are moving automatically to redirect water flow from the pool into the spa. So we're activating spa as we speak, okay? So the valves are done turning, the pump has ramped up, and the spa is starting to go. Starting to go. If you went over there and you put your hand in front of the jets, there's a lot of water force coming out of them. Although it still looks like a glass top, although it looks like there's still nothing happening, there is. There's a lot of water being pushed through the jets right now. And that is 
why we have an air blower on our pools. We have an air blower to kind of start help the siphon of air. And we have an air blower to help you with deep therapy if you ever need it. In this particular case, what I always recommend, recommend to my clients, if you don't need deep therapy, then at least turn on the air blower for about half a minute to start getting an air siphon through the jets of that spa. So we're gonna, we're gonna come back over here to the screen. Look for the uh, spa screen. There it is, tap it. And we are gonna look for the blower icon. Tap the blower icon, turn it on. Our air blower has just turned on, which is now making our spa come alive. I see all six of my jets in there right now. Going pretty well, going strong. So at this point, I'm gonna walk back to the equipment. In most of y'all's cases, y'all will be doing this from the phone. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the air blower now. Air blower is off. And as you see, I still have a nice, crisp, smooth jet action at all six of my jets. And that's what most of my clients prefer. You don't have that obnoxious air bubble in your ear as you're sitting there trying to relax. So that right there is the setting that most everybody prefers, including myself. But that air blower is always there to get this started and to stay on if you need it to, to give you deeper therapy if you do need it. So that is the air blower. Um, other things to talk about on my particular equipment setups is once you're back here already once a week or if you're just walking by the unit, one thing you want to check on these guys is the setting on them. So, there's a lot of pollen on it. It's pollen season right now, so everything's covered in pollen out here. Um, so, this guy's kind of like a microwave. When the power goes out or resets, you got to put, you know, you always got to put the time back on in your microwave. This one doesn't have a clock, but every time the power goes out, it does affect it. Um, sometimes uh, if power surges or if it's lightning strikes, it will trip these guys and it'll put them into what you would think is power mode, but it's not, it's a little confusing. Uh, so what you don't wanna see is what I just set it to. There's a little orange light next to the power icon. That is actually the unit being off. So this is why I recommend that you open this little cover up. If you walk by your unit and periodically check to make sure that this is not the case because what what happened is in this case i put it there but what could in most cases what happens is power goes out and when the power comes back this is what it comes back to so you have to ensure that if you're wanting to get in your spa or your pool or heat up either one of them if you want this heater to come on you have to make sure that that little orange light is next to either one of these two lower icons that icon or that icon it doesn't matter which one of those two lower icons. They don't necessarily mean pool or spa. They mean on one and on two. And the top icon doesn't mean power is on. It means power is off. So again, that's a that's a no no. Um, on our particular setup, make sure that ye that yellow light there is red and on either one of those two lower icons at all times if you want this unit to operate properly. So again, that's another one of those things. It's not necessarily a list item, but when it's good to know. Um, another few things that are good to know here um, on my equipment setups is that we have some actuated valves. You have, for the most part, on most of my setups, you have three actuated valves. Actuated valves be, meaning they are valves on motors. So you have one, two, three of those and they're easy to tell them apart from the rest because they have this big chunk chunky block on them which is a motor okay the other ones look a lot sleeker they're the same thing they're all basically the same valve except we put motors on three of these valves okay so these are actuated valves you have three of them i've labeled them they should all three be labeled i still got one missing but uh i got suction cleaner 
and ultimately this will be labeled return actuator. Um, it's always good to know where their, their toggle switch is set to. So there's a toggle switch on each one of these um, actuated valves. And when we're done setting up your pool, we determine where those toggle switches need to be. And for one, some reason, one reason or another, um, those toggle switches get bumped. I think there's a garden gnome that comes and plays games. I'm not sure, but it's a good idea to take note of where they're at, take maybe a picture of them because they will get bumped. And when they get bumped, things are gonna go haywire with the pool. Things are gonna be reversed of what they're supposed to. So for example, if you're trying to heat up your spa, you might have all your hot water overflowing into your pool. Um, if you're trying to use your spa, you might have all your water draining from your spa into your pool. So if you have any of those funny things happening, always check your toggle switches on your actuated valves. For example, on my return actuator, my toggle switch on, on this particular setup is set to on two. On my cleaner actuator, this toggle switch is set to on two. And on my suction actuator, the toggle switch on this one is on on one. So we have on one, on two, and on two in this particular case. It's good to make note of that. Just in case something weird starts happening, you can always come over here and assure that it's in the right position. Um, speaking of valves, we have three more valves here that we need to talk about. Not everybody's system is exactly the same, but for the most part, most are so um, if you're watching this video you're my client this should look very similar to what you have in your backyard so we've talked about the three actuated valves the suction the cleaner and the return okay now we're going to talk about your manual valves okay which for the most part or most pools of mine are never messed with they stay where i leave them don't mess with them but in this video this will help as a reminder where these valves need to be left at okay so we have manual valves over here and we label our pipes so it shows what these valves are controlling in this particular case which is most cases these valves are going to control for example this the most lower valve is going to control your skimmers okay why would you want more suction on one skimmer than the other in most cases it doesn't really matter so i keep equal suction on my skimmers so 50 50 that valve is set right in the middle which means i have equal suction going to each skimmer i tighten up on that center there and my valve doesn't move as easy anymore so i'm locked it i'm locking it in right there which should always remain um this other valve over here this is my main drain valve i don't use and most of my clients should not use main drain suction because we're using suction cleaners and our suction cleaner is not just cleaning our bottom of our pool but it's, actually, it's acting as a mobile main drain. So it's actually collecting water from the entire bottom of the pool and circulating it throughout. So only reason I plumb my main drains is for future purposes of draining pools, which again, you should never drain a pool without contacting your professional. Don't ever go draining your pool on your own. But I do set my pools up to where you don't have to go rent a pump to drain them. And that's what that's there for. And with that being said, there should be no need for you be, to mess with this valve either. So those two valves, from, in most cases, you'll never mess with them. But in this video, you can see where they should be left so as a reminder. Um, that is your basic setup that we've talked about on most of my pools. Um, on this pool, it does have two water feature pumps. Um, on most of my pools, it's typically only one water feature pump. Um, and when there is a water feature pump, in most cases, there is a valve to control where the water is going back to. Um, if you have two water features, like if you have a bubbler on a sun shelf, and if you have shear descents on a back wall, then this guy right here will determine which one of those is getting more water. If your bubbler is getting more water, or if your shear descents are getting more water, or let's say that um, bubbler gets annoying and you want to turn it off, you come over here and you turn this valve, and you'll be able to turn your bubbler off. Okay. So on all my water feature pumps, I do have this this valve here where you're able to turn off your bubbler or divert more water between water features. Uh, water features are all different on all pools, so I can get into that and spend hours, but um, that should be said enough to not confuse anybody. Um, 
when it comes to the strainer baskets and the water feature pumps, they're not used for any cleaning purposes. So there really won't be a need to clean those. Those should stay clean for most of the time. Um, the only basket that you'll have to worry about is the, the uh, filter pump baskets. So again, um, one other thing that's also good to know um, on my pool installations, uh, on all of them, I have an electrical GFI, which is located on the side of your OmniLogic. If for some reason your lights are not coming on, that's like your pool and your spotlight, it could be something as simple as just resetting your GFI in here. It's probably tripped from an electrical storm. If that's the case, just reset it. Sometimes it could be that the spotlight is going wrong, going bad, and anytime you turn on the spotlight, it trips the GFI. Well, reset the GFI, don't turn the spotlight on, and see if your pool lights work. Or it could be vice versa. Either way, if you're having issues where the GFI just keeps getting tripped, call us, but sometimes they'll get tripped just by um, electrical storms. So again, take note that there's an elect electrical GFI located on the side of your OmniLogic. Um, in a different segment, we'll go over programming. We will go over water chemistry. But for now, we have talked about the basics of the mechanicals of what you need to do on a weekly basis to keep your pool looking good, okay? Uh, what to know back here when you walk back here and you look at all this stuff, okay? I don't think there's a piece of equipment here that we haven't discussed that I've installed. Um, you have your master to your fill line right here. If you ever need to turn your fill line off, turn it off right there that's your master okay otherwise you leave that open all the time because you're going to control um, most of my clients are able to control their fill lines from a, a push of a button on their phone okay they're electronic fill valves they're not auto fills uh, and they're not manual valves they're electronic fills it's not for everybody but for the most part most of my clients have that set up um, Other little things is you have uh, gas shutoff valves over here. For some weird reason, you ever needed to shut off your gas, you can shut off your gas here, or you have a main gas shutoff valve. At your gas meter, which is that blue handle valve right there. thing just to take note of um, just for reference if you can get a shot of this pressure right here on this filter I want to show y'all what's gonna happen when you put the system in spa mode so right now we're running in spa mode okay and earlier in pool school I said that it's not good running that pressure close to that red red uh, arrow there because the internal is running under high pressure well let me make myself clear it is normal for it to be like that under spa mode. Spa mode, you're gonna be under this running pressure for maybe an hour or two, once a week, maybe three times a week, but not under this as constant pressure. So at this at this pressure for small period of time, it's not gonna destroy the interior of that. Don't get scared if you walk back here while the spa is running and you see this pressure, that's normal. There's typically gonna be about a 10 pound uh, offset from pool mode to spa mode. So what I'm gonna do now, as we keep focused into that, is I'm gonna come out of spa mode into pool mode and you see how the pressure will drop. So again, we're going from spa mode to pool mode. And as you see, our pressure has already started to drop. So it is totally normal for the pressure to increase by 10 pounds when uh, you engage spa mode. And with that, Oh, and I guess uh, before I conclude pool school, uh, one other thing is all your breakers are here. They're all they're all labeled, and then you have one main breaker inside, uh, typically in your garage or wherever your main breaker panel is located. So one main breaker in your house that controls all this, and then you have all these breakers here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and extend this pool school. 
because we got hit with a severe freeze this year here in Houston, Texas. Something that's never happened. They said it's a once in a hundred year kind of storm, but I don't believe it. I hope it is, don't believe it. But just in case we do ever get hit with something like that again, if you're wondering how to drain the system so you can save yourself a whole lot of money, hopefully, well, let's talk about that. Talk about how to drain this pump, these pumps, how to drain the filter, how to drain um, the heater, okay? So all those three things that I just mentioned have drain plugs. We just gotta know where they're at, very simple. The drain plugs on these pumps are these guys right here. I got my fingers on them. My index and my middle finger are on both drain plugs right now. This one located in the same spot. This one located in the same spot. Most of my pumps, most of these model pumps, that's where your drain plugs are at. Very simple. Just come over here and just to drain a pump, just take both of these off. Just like that. And you open your lid. Your pump is drained. Okay. Put them back. Very simple. Okay, that's how you drain your, your pumps. To drain your heater, just come over here. You'll take the same little same little cap off this right that I took off the pump is located right here on the heater, and you can also take this guy off. Okay, in this particular case, we will be installing a pressure relief that will have a little lever here that you'll be able to pull and that will actually act as you taking that plug off so in some cases you won't have this plug you'll have a pressure relief with a piece of pipe right here but it has a little lever on it if you pull that lever and it stays open that's like draining your draining uh, your heater here so again if it doesn't have this cap and it's that lever just pull that lever leave it open and take this cap off that should take care of draining the heater. The other thing you want to do is there's always going to be a check valve in between the heater and the chlorinator. Always take the check valve, take all these screws out and take that clear lid off and take that inside with you. Okay? Very important that you do that because you can you can think you're draining the heater, but you're really not if that check valve's in play. That check valve holding water in here. So again, it's not just taking these off. Very important, you have to remove all these screws and take that clear lid off and take it inside with you. But there's also a gasket there. So it's gonna be all those screws, the lid and a gasket. Keep that all together, put it in a Ziploc bag and once the freeze is over, put it back on. Um, and that's only if you lose power. That's only if you lose power. So I wouldn't suggest that you drain any of this stuff unless you lose power because if you have power the computer system is protecting all this during freeze temp during freezing temperatures there is freeze protect on your equipment so again i do not recommend that you go draining everything unless you have lost power okay now uh to drain the filter there is a drain plug at the very back bottom of all the filters that's very easy to locate just pull that drain plug and maybe open your pressure relief here and that's drained so that's how you drain your equipment to avoid it from damage when you when you lose power during freezes. Other than that, I hope I answered most of y'all's questions. I will have other editions where we talk about how to break down the filter and other things, chemicals. So I hope I answered a lot of questions. And with that being said, this concludes Pool School, everybody. Have a good day.